Hello and welcome to Talking UN, a project initiated by the UN Information Office in Tashkent. Through this project, we'll be inviting the heads of UN agencies working in Uzbekistan to tell us more about their work, their operations and their activity, as well as their cooperation with the local communities and with their national partners. For the first edition of Talking UN, we'll be joined by Anita Nirodi, the UN Resident Coordinator, to tell us about the priority areas of UN's activities in the Republic of Uzbekistan. Thank you, Anita, very much for uh, joining us for the first edition of Talking UN. My first question to you is, what is your take on UN in Uzbekistan's role in uh, facilitating the construction of a strong parliament and civil courts in the country? And in Uzbekistan, we have a number of uh, initiatives that are working closely with parliament, primarily to build their capacities. And when I mean capacities, it is through technical advice, it is through training, it is through bringing global best practices from different parts of the world and helping the parliamentarians as well as the secretariats that support the parliamentarians to do their job better. So what does that mean, to do their job better? It means that they should understand what the lawmaking process is about in any area, in any field. It could be health, it could be education, it could be the environment, etc. But it's also very important that the oversight function of parliament is strengthened and uh, UN is supporting a program where strengthening the oversight function is, is going to be important and this will be done through, you know, developing manuals and guidelines uh, on uh, uh, strengthening oversight capacities. Uh, but also very importantly, uh, we want to focus on strengthening the representative functions of parliament. This is going to be very important. And this will be done through uh, helping them with building up a communication strategy so that they can better communicate with the electorate in the country, with the people who have supported them. So these are some of the activities. I should also mention that we're also supporting parliamentary journalism, which is to strengthen the messaging that goes out back and forth between the parliament and the electorate. And uh, very interestingly, we also support something called Children's Parliament because this really provides an opportunity for adolescents and children across the country to be able to express their views about issues that are of importance to them. So these are some of the issues with regards to Parliament. I've of course only touched on a few of them, but there are several areas where uh, we provide uh, support. Uh, and also an important area that we are working in is in the area of strengthening uh, judicial reform in the country. And of course, we're very pleased that we will soon be starting a program on, on strengthening of civil courts in the country. Uh, but here again, UNDP and the UN has been playing an important role in supporting judicial reform uh, in many uh, parts of the world. And strengthening civil courts is going to be extremely important so that the courts can actually do their administrative business easier and more efficiently and without delays, so that legal assistance becomes available to those who are most in need. That is essentially the fundamental premise of what we are doing. But at the same time, as part of judicial reform, we are also strengthening through a series of training activities the capacities of prosecutors and judges across the country on international standards and national legislation on issues related to integrity, uh, professional conduct, implementation of the UN Convention Against Corruption, which Uzbekistan government has signed up to. Uh, so these are some of the very important areas. So we hope to continue and strengthen our engagement both on parliamentary as well as judicial reform. Thank you very much for your answer. Of course, as we all know, UN in Uzbekistan has been uh, working closely with local municipalities, otherwise known as Hokimiats, uh, to help them achieve transparency in their activities. While transparency is an important uh, quality, how does UN uh, in Uzbekistan work with national partners to help achieve this? 
I think this is a very important issue that you have raised because the UN family in Uzbekistan across the board is working with the Hakimiyats in delivering a very important number of services and support to communities across Uzbekistan. And we have a wide range of experiences uh, in terms of increasing the efficiency of service delivery of the Hakimiyats. Uh, in building up their planning and implementation capacity so that very critical services can be met. So we do have a number of programs that are supporting building up the transparency and accountability uh, of the local governance systems uh, in the country. And I just wanted to share with you a few examples because I think these are very important steps uh, that Uzbekistan is making in the right direction and I think the UN is going to play a very important role in that support in this regard. Uh, we have supported uh, Uzbekistan in setting up a, something called a one-stop shop which is a very interesting concept because it brings together under one single roof a critical set of very important services so that if I'm a citizen and I want to let's say, uh, register my child in a kindergarten or uh, register a birth in the family or uh, find uh, some important uh, information about uh, taxation, things like that, I would be able to go to one place to get responses and support on these services. I would not need to go to various places. That's the theory behind the one-stop shop. And in very practical terms, this has been operationalized. The first one-stop shop was established in Sergeli district um, in Tashkent. And um, the concept has been very successful and it is being in fact replicated in various parts of the country by the government. And what this one-stop shop has done is it actually increases efficiency, but it also reduces the risk of red tape uh, and of corruption. Uh, so there is much more uh, openness and accountability by bringing these services together. So that is, that is one example. Another example is that, um, you know, through one of our initiatives, we have set up uh, six resource centers, press services, uh, in Namangan and Jizak regions. And through these centers, there will be more information available to the citizens residing over there on the information and the activities that the local Hakimiyats are conducting. So it in fact facilitates easier exchange of information and uh, uh, knowledge flow between the citizens and between uh, the Hakimiyats uh, in, in question. And I think this is a very important uh, step and we very much hope that uh, this uh, concept could also be replicated in other parts uh, of uh, Uzbekistan. Now, these are just uh, two examples of what we've done, but clearly there is, uh, there is, there are, uh, there are many others. Uh, another very interesting uh, concept is the establishment of public councils, because clearly to enhance um, transparency and accountability in any system and society, it's very important to have dialogue and exchange between the government and the private sector and the civil society. And these public councils could play that very important role to facilitate that dialogue and to also contribute to planning and development at the regional level. So this is going to be uh, uh, also a very important uh, step in the right direction. And of course, if you uh, look at uh, issues related to local governance, we are of course supporting a number of initiatives, for example, uh, training of uh, the prosecutor's uh, office, uh, training of the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Justice and others uh, on various issues uh, that are intrinsically linked to accountability and transparency. For example, uh, the training on the international norms and standards and legislation, the local legislation on habeas corpus. This is very important support we provide, but also training on the convention that I had just mentioned. So I think these are going to be uh, very, very important steps on strengthening accountability and transparency. And uh, we bring in the knowledge and best practices from different parts of the world in this, and we look forward to continuing our engagement. Thank you.
Thank you so much. And Anita, my last question to you is, as we all know, the majority of Uzbekistan's population is composed of young people under the age of 30, now over 60%. And how does UN and Uzbekistan work to reach out for them within its activity in the country? Let me begin by mentioning that um, the Secretary General attaches great importance to the issues of youth and to the involvement of youth in the transformation of any country's development and uh, in achieving the Millennium Development Goals, the youth play an important role. And I think your question is very timely because um, the UN uh, has hosted a very recently a very important conference in Nairobi, uh, Kenya, about uh, the issue of youth and the important role that youth play uh, in terms of leadership and in terms of contributing to the economic, social and political processes of the country. During the conference in Nairobi, uh, youth groups from uh, different parts of the world participated. And I think there were a couple of very important messages that were coming out of that conference. One is that youth need to be seen in any country as part of the solution to addressing development challenges, not as part of the problem. They are really a part of the solution. And the second important message is that each country is obligated to remove the obstacles and the barriers for youth to effectively participate in the economic and the social and the political dialogue in their countries. So these are very important and I believe that they are very relevant for Uzbekistan as well because you've mentioned there's a large percentage of the population. I think I heard 62% under the age of 30 and almost 35% under the age of 16. So there is a large percentage of the population that are young and I think that youth are really the future of the country. Uh, we all need to be investing heavily in them now uh, at this point in time. Uh, and the UN, of course, attaches great importance and priority to this issue. We are uh, particularly proud of the youth peer education network that we have est established in Uzbekistan since 2005. And I think what's unique about this network, which, as you might know, consists of peer educators who are using, through networks between youth groups in the country, a number of community-based interventions to address a range of issues related to adolescent sexual reproductive health and also um, against HIV AIDS. And there's a number of very important measures being taken by these youth groups in this regard. But what is interesting is that the focus of this network is really peer-to-peer -peer education. So it serves as a very good complement to the formal education system in the country that is focusing on healthy lifestyles and good family. And with this year being the year of good family in Uzbekistan, I think that this issue becomes e even more important. Uh, youth is essentially a cross-cutting issue for us. We are working in a number of our projects and programs on youth. And we are very excited about a new initiative that we will be beginning very shortly that's going to look at youth leadership issues uh, that is going to promote the concept of volunteerism amongst youth to address a number of social and economic challenges within the communities that they live in so that they can really contribute as full members of the society to addressing the development needs in their community. And we look forward to our future engagement with youth. We do believe this is a very, very important area and we stand ready to support Uzbekistan in this regard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah,